call this uh, meeting to order. Our first item of business is to have Pastor Matt McDonald of the City Church. just to remember that you are um, our God and you are um, you are a gracious, loving, faithful God. Um, and we pray for this meeting and for our, our leaders of our city. Pray that you would give them wisdom, um, that you would give them uh, courage and energy to serve our city. We thank you for them, and we pray that you protect them as they serve. We pray for our um, the rest of our city employees and our police officers, firefighters. We just ask that you would um, be with them every day as they serve our city and protect um, our citizens. <coughs> we thank you for Cape Girardeau and our city. We thank you for just all the different ways that you are at work um, in our city. We pray for all the ways that there's still um, brokenness and hurt and um, division. We pray that you would um, just bring healing and restoration to our city. Um, we pray for, uh, especially in light of this last weekend and the, the violence in our country, that we pray for peace. Pray for um, an end to violence in our city and in our country. God, we uh, we're reminded that we cannot put our hope in this world, and we look forward to um, the world to come, where there will be no suffering and no pain and no no death. God, I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and uh, the work that he accomplished on the cross for our sins. Thank you for your grace, and we just um, pray your blessing over this meeting. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Please join the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Um, a shout out uh, because of that um, 
Uh, not that many in Cape uh, have deployed that type of landscaping and stormwater management techniques, so we would encourage everyone to, to follow their example. Thank you so much.
the original plan called for leaving the intersection completely open during construction. And that is all the interstate exits and at least one lane of traffic under. And it, uh, they estimated that to be a little over $12 million and the bids came in 18 to $20 million. Uh, primarily because of all of the staging and the things they had to do were a lot more than what they ever thought. Uh, so they went back and looked at uh, with their uh, bidders uh, and talked to them and went back and looked at ways they could save money and decided that first of all their plan was to just close the traffic between Cape and Jackson on, on the highway underneath the, the overpasses for seven months. Uh, well you laugh but uh, that project uh, was is projected to cost about 15.8 million and uh, people were, were really upset about that fact so then they went back to the drawing board and came back with a third plan uh, which basically keeps one lane of traffic open between Cape and Jackson, uh, but it's a lot more complicated. It closes the northbound exits on 55 for up to nine months. So you can't come down 55 and get off at Jackson. You can't come out of Cape and get on 55 to go north at that, at that intersection. Uh, a lot of people were probably more upset at that than they were having it closed underneath, which surprised me. Uh, that part was 16.5 million, 16.4, 16.5 million. Uh, but it also had other, other little nuances, like if you get off uh, 55 coming north on, to Cape, uh, you can't turn left to Jackson. You have to go down Kings Highway, go down 61, and make a U-turn and come back, and actually go through the ground all the way down to the park and come to County Park and come back. Uh, cars parked in the sportsplex could come out of the sportsplex and turn right and eliminate the left turn. You can't go left in the Cape. You have to go to Jackson, make a U-turn, and come back. Very complicated. So, uh, at our next meeting, uh, they, the simple board will look at these plans and vote then on which option that uh, we think better fits our community needs in Cape and Jackson. Uh, MoDOT's not bound by that. They can basically kind of do whatever they want to do anyway. But in any event, it just looks like uh, one of those two options where something's going to be closed for a while, it's going to be what's going to happen. It's just a matter of, of uh, what it's going to be and what concessions, businesses, and, and alternative methods of transportation are going to be had to get to those businesses uh, a lot of fun a lot of fun uh, staff uh, was giving various presentations uh, throughout the last two weeks to different organizations and service clubs in the community about our capital improvement tax improvements which is renewal uh, renewed tomorrow and vote so I would encourage you to get out there and vote yes, and, and just for the future of our city, uh, to have better streets, to have better airport, uh, to have a more progressive city hall, uh, to, rain, to retain Common Place Courthouse as an iconic building and, and make it useful again. Uh, I had the privilege of going to St. Louis for the Missouri Main Street Annual Meeting, and uh, there were four different uh, people or organizations in Cape Toronto for, uh, for awards at that meeting. Uh, Lieutenant Brad Smith was nominated for Outstanding Public Official of the Year for all his work with Downtown Cape and the organization. Uh, he did not win, but the fact that he was a semifinalist was uh, good for Cape and, and uh, good for Brad. Uh, I had the pleasure of sitting at the table with the three other nominees who all won. And Cape was really recognized a lot that night. Isle Casino was voted the Partner of the Year for downtown organizations. Zigfields won Business of the Year. Uh, they had their 80th anniversary this year. And the Old Town Cape Historic Landmark Preservation Group for their work with the Courtyard by Marriott and Marquette Building won the Large Project of the Year. 
So it was a great night for Cape Girardeau and Old Town Cape. Uh, they also gave an award to Marla Mills. Uh, she has been with Old Town Cape for 13 years and she's leaving to pursue other interests, although she will stay in Cape. Uh, so that was, it was just a fun evening. And uh, we really need to be there with those, those uh, three groups that won awards. Uh, I got to attend several pertinent presentations about downtown projects and historic preservation, and that's always kind of fun. So it was a, a huge week for Cape Girardeau, and, and I was glad to be there and be part of it. Uh, I can't think of anything else. Just get out and vote tomorrow. Get out and vote. Staff. Josh. I want to know why uh, Brad Smith didn't sit with mayor, so he could have won too. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk to him. Um, uh, no, it was great. Uh, it was a great day for, for Cape. I just wanted to recognize um, the 144 days, was it, Molly? Yes. 144 days, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that we kept pumps running yeah. in the downtown pump stations. still hear humming in their ears <laughs> uh, because they've been doing that for so long but uh, it really these are public servants that don't uh, like a lot of credit we ask them about trying to come here and I don't know whether we can get them here we'll, we'll, we'll try to do that but uh, they're just salt of the earth uh, like all of uh, our city employees they don't don't get into city government for the money or, or the recognition you get in just because you love people and you love your city and these folks do that but I want to recognize uh, that uh, extraordinary uh, level of commitment uh, to public service. Anybody else? If not, we'll move on. Uh, the next item for discussion is a visit with citizens interested in appointment to council uh, position for Ward 3. Uh, I, uh, I've, I've been a proponent since I've been elected to get more people involved with city government. And uh, I think it, I would. I thought well, we got we got three or four applicants. <laughs> yeah, would be fantastic. And we had ten, and it just flabbergasted me. I'm, I really think it's a neat thing. Now one has dropped out, so there are nine left. And I want to. Uh, I thank you all for being here. I thank you for your interest and your your willing to serve. Uh, we as a council. Uh, have a few questions that we'd like to ask you, and here's how the process is going to work. Uh, there are nine people here uh, interested in this position, and we have a lot of the same questions we're going to ask each of you. Uh, we're going to try to limit your answers, if you can, to four minutes or less. Uh, when I call your name, I'd like you to come up and maybe introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and so forth, and we'll start asking questions. At the end of this process this evening, each council person is going to pick. We're trying to narrow this down a little bit, so we, we uh, they're going to pick uh, three people, and we'll narrow it down to three. On August 19th, at our next meeting, uh, we'd like those three to come back. And uh, if there are any other questions, anybody wants to ask them that evening, that's fine. We will vote that evening. I'm trying to keep this an open process so everybody sees what's going on. Uh, we'll vote that evening, and then that person will be sworn in that night as our new council member for Ward 3. And you'll be there till uh, the election in April, uh, at which time uh, it's open for election and anybody from that board. Okay? Anybody have any questions? Okay. So we will start. I'm not sure how this list was made, whether it was by those who applied first or whatnot, but the first person I'll ask you to come up is Tom Roy. Hello, I'm Tom Roy. Um, I moved here in uh, 1992, attended college here at Southeast, liked it so much, never left. Um, Spent 15 years in public health in Stoddard County. I was the assistant director there. There I uh, learned a lot about government. Um, 
had to collaborate a lot with Kate. I always lived here. I never moved there. I didn't want to really. My family was here, so I would commute every day down to Bloomfield and back. And uh, I've lived in the same house now for 19 years. Live in Ward Three. I work in Ward Three. Work for the hospital southeast. Run the uh, cardiothoracic and vascular unit uh, surgery. Um, coming here for meetings, uh, public health meetings. Got to know a lot of the officials here. A lot of the emergency management, mostly. I was very involved in uh, Mark Winkler, uh, Hash Hyder, a lot of the police department as well. And uh, don't have any special interests, don't have any special agendas, just wanting to help the city, good city, become a great city. Hoping that my work, my skills that I've accumulated for the last 30 years uh, can help. Okay. Good. Council. Uh, I'm just going to leave this up to you to ask questions. What do you think, uh, if you could pick two or three topics that, I know you say you don't have special interest, but some things that are important to you or pieces that you see within the community? Road streets, obviously. Um, we don't hear about that at all. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, landlords, um, yeah. you know, we are a university town. Uh, we've got a lot of traffic. We've got a lot of people that are city occupants for a certain amount of months, and then they're gone. They have no vested interest. Mm -hmm. And um, But the landlords should. You know, we've got college kids coming in, moving into our ward, your ward. Uh, not necessarily keeping up with the properties, uh, but the landlord should be held to task. I know we have, uh, you know, uh, inspections going on, and that's a great thing. Uh, they need to be maybe possibly tightened up. Um, love the parks here in Cape Girardeau. Big proponent of the parks. Would love to see, you know, the parks expand and including Capital Hall doing a great job there. Fort D. You know, Fort D is technically a park, but I think it'd be something bigger, better, botanical garden, something in South Cape. Good. Are you aware of the time commitment it takes to interact with constituents to yes. read information you may get from city staff, prepare and attend scheduled meeting, uh, that you're also uh, expected to be at special meetings and represent the council on certain advisory boards? Yeah. And so forth. Absolutely. Before I came here today, I seek some advice from past council members. Uh, Charlie Hurst, he was my IT guy whenever I was uh, down in Stoddard County. Um, and um, I knew when he was a police officer here as well. So I had a, a lot of business with him. And I was texting him and calling him. And, uh, you know, Pat Caddy, we were college roommates. We were from the same town. We grew up in St. Genevieve together. Our freshman year here at Southeast, we were roommates, and he was a past camp, uh, council member. And then, uh, so I, I called them and I texted them. And at first, I, you know, we're, we're asking them about the meetings and what days they're on and stuff like that. And uh, Pat was the first one that said, "Take more time, you think?" You know. So uh, we talked in depth about that, and uh, absolutely, I'm, I'm ready for it. I got a daughter that's uh, junior at Notre Dame now. And um, so she's grown <laughs> enough to where, you know, I'm not taking care of toddlers or anything like that. How would you, if you're selected, do you anticipate uh, running in the election? In, in that I don't know. Uh, you know, this is kind of, the reason I did run is because uh, there was no election. And I was afraid that nobody else could run. And I didn't know who would represent, you know, our district, our ward. Uh, I was wrong. <laughs> so we've got quite a bit of representation here, and uh, when the paper came out, I was like, oh, I know these people. <laughs> you know, I have been friends with them, and I thought, oh, they're as good as I am. So um, <laughs> I was happy to see the representation uh, that showed up in the paper and uh, was, was pleased. Yeah. But will I run again? Uh, I'll answer that when I get there. Uh, this is kind of testing the waters. I'm sure I'll like it uh, when the election rolls around. 
uh, I'll make that decision then. You know, I had this discussion already with my daughter and asked her about it, and she said, yeah, why not? Absolutely. Uh, what do you think are some of the most pertinent issues facing the city of Cape Verano? Well, there's new uh, topics coming up every day. I think the, the newest ones right now are uh, the marijuana laws and uh, the move of the city council, and uh, I think that's a moving target. Uh, it's not going to be the same tomorrow as it is today. Uh, road streets, uh, lights, that's always going to be a mainstay. Uh, but as time goes on, I think we'll have to change with the environment. Anybody else? All right. Thanks, Thanks for the opportunity. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Brad Toshoff, I'm our CPA here in town. Uh, with the big thing down my crying and light. Um, I grew up in uh, Oak Ridge, uh, so I've been around Cape all my life. Uh, went to Seymour down here, uh, graduated back in 89 uh, with a bachelor of science in accounting, and uh, been doing accounting work for pretty much ever since then. Um, <clears throat> some of the uh, firms I've worked for have uh, done <clears throat> some audits for uh, cities, counties, so I'm familiar with the financial aspect of what you guys go through. Uh, I know it's not always an easy task to, to come up with the funds to do projects that are needed, uh, so it's you have to weigh what is most important to get done right away and what can be put off and wait for a little bit longer. Welcome uh, back to the question I asked uh, Mr. Roy. What, what are some of the issues that, that you find in Cape Girardeau that are uh, important or that you see that we need to address? Um, well, one of the big uh, issues that I see are Landlord, um, where I live, uh, has become a lot of college housing around. Um, not always, but several semesters since I lived there, I moved in in 2001. Um, I've had less than desirable college students. Um, sometimes they're great. The ones that wake me up in the middle of the night, not so much. <laughs> um, just the other day, I, the same house that I've had issues with in the past, uh, there was a guy out there picking up trash. That's the first time that I've ever seen someone that's a college student going out picking up trash with, you know, <laughs> I was kind of impressed actually. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping that they're going to be a good group of kids there. I like the way that uh, Kappa Hall Park's been improved. Uh, it looks very nice. It's a long way from when I was young, uh, the, when the pool was there, that's where we went most of the time to go swimming. Uh, you know, it looks hugely different than it did 40 years ago. Um, you know, the streets, there are some streets that I think need some help. Uh, some of the streets that have already been fixed, uh, I, I, they look much better, they drive much better. Uh, doesn't feel like I'm driving down through the farm. Right. So, uh, Stacy asked this question the last time. What, do you have interest in running for the uh, position permanently in April? Absolutely. Uh, the last election, I I don't know whether or not to, to run. And I guess I didn't make up my mind until it was too late to, to uh, get my hat in. Uh, whether or not you guys appoint me to this position, I have intentions of running here in April when it comes around again. I'll ask you the same question. Are you aware of the time commitment necessary to, to go to the meetings, to read all the materials? Interact with staff, interact 
to the advisory board, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yes, very much. Uh, a former client of mine was uh, Kathy Swan, and I know when she was on the city council, um, the time commitments that that was required. Some discussions, and that's been several years. Um, I can't imagine that the time commitments have gotten any less. Uh, so I understand that. Uh, I have two boys. One's uh, going to be a junior, uh, sophomore in college, and the other's going to be a junior in Bed Central. So I've got time to to take care of what needs to be done. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> What is your view about the city of Pittsburgh as a whole? Um, it's a very nice city. Um, most of the, my life, I did actually in other cities, I think. I lived in the county around Oak Ridge growing up. Um, lived here in Cape when I was going to college. I uh, lived in and then in an apartment. Uh, I lived in Columbia, Arnold, Jackson. I, I really like Cape more than any of the other cities. Uh, Arnold, I, I didn't care for the hugeness of the city. Jackson was a little bit smaller. Um, Columbia was nice where I lived there. Uh, <coughs> living out in the country was, can be nice, um, but it sure is nice to be in, in the town where you can go get what you need without having to drive for an hour round trip. Uh, there's all kinds of uh, businesses here in town. You know, I can remember where out by the interstate was open fields. Uh, that's been several years ago, but I mean, it's, it's expanded quite a bit. Anybody else? Christine Rashad, Robbie, when you smile at me, it doesn't help me be formal. Um, many of you know me, and it's, it's a tough work because I know so many may interact with you, so to stand in the hot seat is a different experience for me. Um, so I moved to Cape in 1996. Uh, it was going to be a temporary thing, about a year. I apparently didn't leave in time. Um, I bought my house that same year, so I've lived in Ward 3 since that time. Um, I've worked in Ward 3 um, at the university for 20 years. I managed the Crown Shoe store that used to be in Town Plaza before that uh, and got to hear Lou Hobbs make music all the time um, because he was the manager back then, if that brings back way back, way back. I remember when Town Plaza flooded, so intimately I know how important those pumps are. Um, and, you know, I've been incredibly fortunate. I still have imposter syndrome. I laugh that, you know, I feel like I shouldn't be standing here in front of you because I still feel like that 20-year-old kid. Um, but my parents instilled in me a big heart for service. So how I know so many folks in this room is serving on boards, serving on committees. My background academically, public relations and public administration. Um, through my experiences both in management and at the university, I've accumulated a, a skill set that's really, really diverse. Um, in the last year, I've been serving as the interim executive director for the Center of Economic and Business Engagement at Southeast. Don't ask me to write that title out. Um, but more people know me as the director of continuing education and engagement here in Southeast. So I've worked with things that are as broad as um, community health worker and public health training, uh, infant mortality reduction initiatives, economic development. Um, I'm, I'm certified in a number of different areas from community capacity building uh, to the most recent, which is conflict resolution. Um, so really, my whole purpose for being here is much like uh, folks that you're going to hear follow me. We didn't think anyone would apply. And then when I saw the list come out in the paper, I almost dropped out because there are so many qualified people in this room that I could get behind as my Board 3 representative. And I don't envy any of you sitting there because I can't imagine how tough the choice would be. So. I know you're going to ask me a question. <laughs> I'll, I'll ask you the same question. So uh, whenever you look at Cape Girardeau, what do you see as some some issues or, or tasks that are very important to you? 
Sure, you know, I'm, I'm still really enamored with the Purpose Built Communities. Uh, we started down that road and I, I, I want to see that journey continue um, and that falls very much in line with sort of my passion areas. So I think that's what you were getting at before, what are you passionate about? Um, I have seen intimately, like the other folks that have been up here, um, the impact that bad landlords have on our communities. Um, and man, Ward 3 is so incredibly diverse um, because there's so many great things happening. Those, the changes in Town Plaza, um, the changes in Jefferson, Lee Ragsdale is rocking it out. But last week, guys, we had a shooting there. So I think, you know, it, it kind of concerns me that no one's mentioning violence and some of the other systemic problems. That's heavy on my brain and my heart because while we go forward and we're really making strides, we've got to figure out what's going on in the underpinning to, to address that stuff. So. I'll ask you the same question. Are you aware of the time commitment necessary to do the job? I am, and those of you who know how many things I serve on, the first thing Julia came in and said when I walked in the door was you're going to have to shift some things. I'm well aware of that, so, uh, and that's something I would expect you all who know how many things I'm involved in to be concerned about. Um, I can tell you that if I were to be your selection, I'm very committed in to moving things around um, and reallocating my time to make this a priority. Well, I mean, I... I have the unique uh, perspective to have stood where you're standing last year um, and was asked a lot of the same questions and I would just uh, just mention to you all that the time commitment is is real I mean, there, there, there are um, it, you know I've met with council members when you know I went through this process and uh, you know it's a good time commitment one thing is I will tell you economic development has been something I never dipped a toe into and didn't think I could do. Probably if I hadn't had that experience, wouldn't be standing here. And I've learned that I can learn a lot of things really quickly, so I would be counting on that skill to get caught up to speed. So um, the same question that I asked the previous year to Brad, um, do you have interest in running uh, in, in April? This to me feels a little bit like a dating situation. This may not be a good fit for the council. I may be horrible. And also, uh, it may be something that I find that I'm very passionate about. I won't rule it out. I didn't put my name down initially with any thought. Uh, and actually, initially said there's no way I would run. I think as I've talked with people, because I was going to drop out and had some friends who were really pretty opposed to that idea and counseled me that I should try give it a shot, they thought I could be a good board representative. If that happens, maybe. What do you think is the greatest opportunity facing the city of Cape Girardeau? Oh, just one? You know, we are so incredibly well positioned. I have been spending more time than ever in Poplar Bluff uh, because they're doing an awful lot of things there and, and working with economic development. And they don't have the benefit of our location. We're on the river, we're halfway between St. Louis and Memphis. We're so well positioned to take advantage of a lot of different economic development opportunities and tourism opportunities. Um, so I really look at that first, but overall the people. Um, I, <laughs> there were some folks from the Missouri Department of Economic Development, I think they met with Scott first, and they came in and they said, how do we reinvigorate a spirit of entrepreneurship in Missourians? And I, we were down at Port Cape by the wall, and I said, all of these Cape Girardins have that spirit, but we have that. But we might need to reconnect people with it, but man, that's an asset. So in addition to the, to the location, um, just the thought team that you can build here, and I see that like you did when you traveled. Um, so many assets in, in that human capital. Hi, I'm going to move this down so I don't have to tip it up. <laughs> okay. Uh, looks to me like you need a senior citizen on your panel. I'm qualified there. So we can start with that. Uh, I graduated uh, from Arkansas State University, moved to Cape Girardeau, and took my, first, my only teaching job here in 1972. Um, 
We purchased the house that we currently live in in 1973, two blocks from Jefferson School. Now, I have not always lived in it. Sometimes it's been a rental, but um, we've always been involved in what I didn't know then, but what I know now is called the South Side, the Jefferson Side. Um, so I've had a vested interest in Cape Girardeau since 1972. I taught for 21 years. I was a traveling sales rep for 12 years, traveling all over Southeast Missouri, so I really know Southeast Missouri and the northern tier of Arkansas. Um, some of you know that I've been in front of the city council uh, two or three times on different issues, so I don't have any fear of city government. Um, I believe that our local area is always affected by what happens on the state level, and because of that, both as in my career in education and in my career as a realtor, I've been very active on the state level, sometimes going for lobbying days, often going for lobbying days, because I do believe that what the state does affects us. Um, for the local board of realtors, I am a member of the board of realtors and have been off and on for a number of years. Shelly, we worked in the same building at one point in time. Um, and as a realtor, I am active on the state level. <coughs> I serve on the statewide forms committee, uh, which meets every month in Columbia or Jefferson City. And I do know what it takes to study issues ahead of time and then to consider things, you know, as they are presented to you. Um, think of being on a committee that is in the room with three lawyers all day long. <laughs> That's what serving on the forms committee is like every month. Um, I have been a, an election judge for 21 years, or 27 years, and a supervisory judge for I don't know how many of those years, but a number of those years. So I'm used to volunteer work. Um, I visited for Mended Hearts for a time at Southeast Hospital, and I hesitate to run against anybody who has anything to do with cardiac because I'm a cardiac patient. <laughs> In short, I've always believed in stepping up, and um, I'm not intimidated by the fact that there are nine or ten people, because I trust that you'll choose good candidates. Questions? Go! All right, thanks. <laughs> I'll ask you to, uh, what, what are some of the, the issues that, that you see uh, that are facing Kate? What, what is near and dear to your heart? Okay, near and dear to my heart, of course, is all things real estate because I've been a realtor since 2004. Um, I, my company is, actually has a physical address of North Fountain Street. We're right behind the Marquette. Um, I'm hardly ever there because everything happens over the phone nowadays. I am very concerned about everything real estate, very concerned about education and our relationship with the university as well as you know, I'm kind of like Terry Kitchen. I guess I might bleed orange if you cut me because I taught for so many years at Cape Central. Um, I'm very invested in the porch initiative and all of the things that are happening around the Jefferson School area. Um, that is near and dear to my heart. I'm a genuine Southside resident. Uh, and public safety. Uh, quite frankly, I think We've suffered some since the police station relocated, so I'm really interested in finding a way to make that substation happen that the police told us would happen, and it hasn't happened yet. So I think somewhere in redevelopment, we need to make room for a substation. Are you aware of the time commitment necessary it takes to serve on the council and the various committees and advisory boards? Reading and the staff interaction. Well, Mayor Flabbergasted, I will tell you, not yet, but I'm willing to take it on. There's a learning curve in everything. Uh, I remember when I first became a teacher, I promised I would teach for three years before I made my decision. I made my decision in year three. So I'm willing to learn. And I'm sort of semi retired. I mean, my real estate business is kind of on the downside. And like I said, you need a senior citizen, guys. <laughs> Do not ignore age. What do you think I am? Oh, uh, you don't qualify as well as I do. <laughs> <laughs> Whip out your driver's license and we'll compare. 
Would you anticipate uh, continuing to serve? Yes. Uh, you know, I don't idea. actually know that. I, I promised myself probably about two or three years ago that I was going to run for city council. Um, I just never got around to it. So I see this as an opportunity. So like I said, there's a learning curve. We'll, we'll see. You might be glad to see me go. <laughs> oh, bless your heart. Come on. What else? What do you see as, as the, the greatest opportunity to see if Cape Girardeau has in front of it? Okay. The river and the university are, I think, and our medical development all over the city of Cape, are our greatest assets. Those three things. We have to do everything we can to enhance our relationship with those three things. And thank goodness for those water pumps that <laughs> saved our damn town. Well, the wall, well, yeah, it's kind of obvious. You're right. And that wall's part of it's got to be rebuilt. Where are we going to find the non flood year for that time? We redid we a big portion underneath that wall. Were you holding your breath? No. Okay. <laughs> Success. Thank you. Thank you. Ashley Ron. <coughs>
I, I have like made a mental list and it left it, uh, the actual one on my phone. So. <laughs> Are you aware of the time commitment sir? Not fully, but as with all things, I'll figure it out. I make my own schedule. I was not ready to be a mother, and she's ten and a half months old, and she's still alive. So um, I, I work with her. Um, so I, I, I've got friends, though. So I'm more than ready. And I'm also an adjunct instructor at Southeast in the biology department. So um, I'm not a stranger to having things to do. Being a mother is the most important job. Oh, you, yes. Nobody um, can. What do you see as the biggest opportunity facing City of Gate? I feel like I'm repeating everything that everybody said, but really the university is one of our biggest sources of influx of diversity. Like, I love how diverse Cape Girardeau is. I would never have dreamed to live and stay in the same town I grew up in where you see the same people all the time. Yeah, I like seeing some of your faces all the time. But I just love that you get people like me who come here and they're like, I want to stay here. Look at this downtown. Where am I? <coughs> it's the biggest little city between St. Louis and Memphis. And our downtown, our hospitals, of course, anything that brings people here. And like, I kind of want to stay here. And I'm like, I'll help you buy a house. <laughs> Well, I do want to tell you, uh, those sessions you missed in the Citizen Camp, you can always come back and just take one I'm probably just going to do the whole thing again. I just am curious if anything's changed. Well, thank I, you. And also, I just... Constantly changing. Oh, yeah, of course. And if I know anything from being a student and teaching, repetition is key. Sometimes. <laughs> Maybe it'll soak in. <laughs> are, you, are you interested in running in April? I really am. Um, and I suppose if... Even if I don't get to take on the interim position, I'll likely come back and attempt to uh, get it officially. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. My name is Nate Thomas. Um, it is not lost on me the distinct privilege that it is to um, stand in front of you as a potential appointee to this uh, vacancy for Ward 3. Um, well, I guess while I was not born and raised in Cape Girardeau, and my wife wasn't either, we both grew up in towns in southeast Missouri, and we came to Cape Girardeau for Chapman and for movies and for whatever else. Um, we chose to live and to raise our family in this city and in this town. We are deeply rooted and integrated in the community. Um, I work for one of the largest employers in the, in the community um, and the region as a physical therapist at Southeast, or not at Southeast, at, at St. Francis Medical Center. I've got that on record now. Huh? So, uh, my wife and I ourselves are also employers, uh, having been in business for over 11 years um, here in Cape Girardeau. Uh, we own several property, multiple properties in Ward 3, um, along with our home. We also have uh, undertaken uh, commercial properties that have been run down and rehabbed them and renovated them into office space. Um, we have three children, um, two of which are in the uh, Cape Public School, Cape Central Public School District, um, and uh, one who is eagerly awaiting his chance to become a tiger at three years of age. Um, we are always active, we have instilled in our kids active in volunteering um, and giving of ourselves, not only financially, but of our time to local philanthropic endeavors and nonprofits, um, and we are very committed to that. Uh, I have gained experience working with the city, navigating the intricacies of the regulations, um, having started my own entrepreneurial venture when I've been back into town. Um, having started it, built it, now sold it, and it is now an active business that offers an alternative thriving service to the, uh, to the community that was not there before it came. Uh, but perhaps I would say my strongest attribute that I would bring to council is in my background in government relations in, for years in government relations working in, um, capital, in the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C. Uh, I worked intimately with not only the U.S. Senators and with the House of Representatives, but uh, with, every, with virtually every uh, congressional committee. Um, my job also enti uh, entailed building relationships and working on a daily basis with numerous U.S. government agencies, including the Health and Human Services 
department, the Department of Education, Department of Labor, Small Business Administration, among many, many others. Um, I was the liaison between them, among them, and to over 100,000 different individuals across the United States. Um, now I understand, it's definitely understandable um, and expected that there will be quite a learning curve for all, any of us, including myself, especially when we um, are appointed to this, uh, if we were to be appointed to the city council position. Um, but I feel I could offer an advantage given my background in government infrastructure, public policy, policy development, budget pro processes, etc., cetera, uh, and, and hit the ground running if I were to be appointed to get them involved, to get them active, um, and to really uh, communicate with them. I'm a listener by nature. I'm an analytical problem solver. Um, my family has been blessed by the opportunities that the city has afforded us, and I would be uh, consider myself very fortunate to serve alongside you guys um, to be able to return that opportunity, because I'm a big believer that with great opportunity comes great obligation. And I would love to lend my talents and my experience to the city. Start again. Um, same thing. What what's what, what issues do you see engaged? What's near and dear to your heart as far as uh, what you see? I would say, I mean, I look at things through a lens of not only um, through a number of lenses, and I bring that to the board as well as not just a citizen and a taxpayer, but also an employer and responsible for the livelihood of other people that we employ. Um, but I say some of the issues are one that's not unique to Cape Girardeau, but to all municipalities across the U.S. is the decline in revenue coming in due to, especially without a use tax, with having internet sales and lack of retail, we need to be able to find some way to funnel more revenue to come into the city. Um, but unique to Cape Girardeau, somewhat unique, is that we have the great fortune of having a very low um, unemployment rate, but it makes it really hard to recruit other businesses here when you can't give them a workforce. And so what is the chicken, what is the egg? But that's going to be um, one of the main issues because we want to bring more businesses here and continue to thrive and build our city and bring in the tax dollars, whatever that we need to create the infrastructure that we have. But um, we need to have the workforce to be able to supply to them. Are you aware of the time commitment necessary to I, be on the council? Yes, most certainly. Um, I am eager. I have the availability, the passion, um, and the drive to be able to, to, to serve in the seat if I were to be chosen to be an appointee. Um, I would relish the opportunity. Um, I've had the great opportunity. I've enjoyed meeting with every one of you um, uh, through this process and um, would enjoy the opportunity to serve on the council. We plan to run in April. Most definitely, yes. It was part of my when the opportunity came available, I, I wanted to seize that, and I would like to continue that forward and really make sure not only Ward 3, but Cape Girardeau continues to travel. What do you think is the biggest opportunity right now facing the city of Cape? I am encouraged by, I mean, I look back at what we have been able to, in, in, God willing, with the voters' blessing tomorrow, with the um, with the interest, the capital improvement tax continuation, um, the infrastructure that we built out just in the time that I've been moved back in the area, but then even beyond, not just parks and rec, but you have a state of the art stormwater uh, treatment plant, wastewater treatment plant, transfer station, recycling facilities, school system. We have the infrastructure in place that now we can use our resources and our revenues in a time that they may be flatlining to use it towards more not just to maintain aging, antiquated facilities and infrastructure, but to use them for things that help move the city forward. Um, such as, I mean, I had a great opportunity on Saturday. I participated in the, uh, the Citizens Police Experience here in town. And if anybody has not done that, I encourage you to do it. You have a whole new lens with which to look and appreciate the work that our policemen do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so eye-opening. But to be able to give them the resources they need to continue to keep our community safe from a public safety perspective because they are the amount of dedication and professionalism that was 
that it was exemplified on Saturday, it blew my mind, but we can funnel money towards that, towards purpose-built communities, towards some of these other initiatives that will continue to make us an attractive place for employees, uh, businesses, and, and residents. Would you anticipate running in April? I do. I want to grow our community with Lacey Jane. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, April 2020. Thank you. 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 Thank um, and I also work as a property manager um, with a company that is uh, actually out of Florida, but based in Charleston. Um, I have lived in the community for four years, so I might be like the newest person who's applying for this. Um, I attended my first um, city council meeting before I even changed my address. Uh, I believe that city council is um, what our engagement, um, this level is extremely important. Um, not only have I been a regular participant in city council, but I um, really encouraged uh, citizen engagement, brought a lot of people to council who continue to be engaged. Um, what else? Let's see. <laughs> I, don't I don't know what else to say. <laughs> what is what? What's near and dear to your heart? What do you see? I mean, I, I have an idea of it. Well, poverty is, I think, the, one of the greatest issues that's facing our community. Um, I think it was last year, maybe mid to late last year, USA Today published an article where Cape Girardeau was listed as the um, top city for poverty growth in the state of Missouri. The group, uh, poverty rate doubled. Um, and so when we talk about issues of crime, um, crime and poverty, go hand in hand, and we can't really talk about reducing crime without addressing the issues of poverty. And that's very complex because poverty has a lot of different facets to it. 
but there are things that we can do um, at our local level that impact us. And we have to just kind of deal with the growth of poverty. You know, the smaller towns um, that are surrounding us are feeding into our community. And I don't think that the answer is to keep people out of how do we um, partner with communities to help them be more healthy and how do we embrace those um, who are coming into our community and help them engage in ways that are more healthy for them and more healthy for us. Um, and then the opioid crisis. Um, and, and I think there was a recent article about the increase of opioids in southeast Missouri and Cape County being one of the like, recipients of over half of the opioids that come through our community. So when you're dealing with issues of poverty also, when you look at the you know, people who are living on the streets, and I mean, it's a lot of addiction and a lot of crime that comes with that as well. Not a lot of resources locally, so how do we attract more local resources um, into our community and partner with the resources that are available so that we can help people heal and be strong, productive citizens in our community. Um, so those, those are things that are, are really, um, that, those are things that are really passionate areas for me. Are you aware of time commitment necessary to be on the council to serve on different committees? I mean, I know you're so, you're busy doing all sorts of things with the community anyway, so I know how much time you spend doing. Yeah, so um, I, I, we all have the same 24 hours in a day, and we choose how we're going to use those hours, and we choose where we're going to put those hours. And I think that anybody who's invested in anything um, uses a lot more hours than the traditional work day to get things done. And, and we, we, do what, we do what's important to us. And so I'm sure that those time commitments ebb and flow. And uh, you have to, with everything in life, you have to make adjustments. And so you, you make those adjustments when it's important, and this is important. What do you think is the greatest opportunity right now in front of the city of Cape Girardeau? Um, I think our greatest opportunity is our elasticity. Um, we have this incredible ability to stretch. We embrace new ideas, we embrace new people, we embrace new strategies. We are an incredibly elastic community, and that will help us to be able to grow. Um, I think one of, um, uh, yeah, I think, that's, I think that's a really great opportunity for us. Do you have you thought about next April? Planning, <laughs> yeah, um, actually, um, yeah, I, I have, and I've had an interest in city council before I moved to Ward Three, um, when Councilwoman Moore um, term was up for re-election. We talked, and if she was not going to run for re-election, then I was going to run. And um, but I live in Ward Three now, so that was one of the first things that I did when I moved into Ward Three to see when the term was up. Um, and I did run for state representative um, last election cycle, and I ran because I was asked to run. And, um, and, and the, the greatest gift of that run was being able to go door to door and talk to people face to face. And while I was willing to serve on the state level, and would have been okay, I really, my commitment is to community. This is what I really love to do, that the day-to-day the -day interaction in people's lives that make a difference right now. I mean, the things that happen on the state level take so much more time and energy and effort to do, and you see results so slowly. But what happens here, like this, the stuff we do makes an immediate impact. And that's vital. So knocking door to door, the things that people had to talk about, you know, some people talk about things that would, you know, take legislation to change. But most people talked about their everyday lived lives. They talked about potholes. They talked about street lights. They talked about crime. They talked about their experiences at the local hospitals. They talked about jobs. They talked about transportation. Um, they talked about parks. You know, these, these are not things that are going to be handled at the legislative level, but they're things that we handle. And um, and I didn't do too bad in War Three, actually. <laughs> yeah, I did pretty good. Um, Considering. So um, I, I enjoy community life. Um, I enjoy building community and watching things happen. Um, it's not always pleasant. It's not always easy. And everyone doesn't always agree with how to get to where we're going. 
But I believe that when we all have the good of the, com uh, the common goal, the good of the people, um, as the highlight and, and our motivating focus, we, we get to where we're going. And, and how we get there is a little less important than just getting there. And, um, and I enjoy that process. Long answer, but yes. <laughs> and I am an English professor at Southeast. Um, I'm also a fitness instructor, yoga instructor at, um, at Fitness Plus. I actually started working at Universal Physique, if, if those of you who've been around for a long time. <laughs> so I've been with them for a long time. Um, I first moved to Cape Girardeau in 1991. Um, it was a my parents moved to Jackson while I was in college. I graduated and didn't have a job and needed a place to live. So I landed here, they moved away, I stayed. I, I, I really, really like this, um, this town. I think it's a, so many opportunities. Um, I, my first job in Cape was for the Parks Department. So um, the question, what's near and dear to your heart? Uh, the Parks. <laughs> Um, I have a lot of love for them. I think we have a fantastic park system and um, different communities that I've interacted with. I did my PhD work in Carbondale. I'm just commuting the whole time. So I was interested, oh, what do they have for parks? I mean, we got them hands down. We have, we have a lot of opportunities for um, the community. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, um, while I don't have a lot of um, political experience, um, I have, I'm a member of the Board of Directors for Cape Public Schools Foundation. Um, a few years back, I was a policy advocate for um, National Council of Teachers of English. That's the professional organization that I belong to. And as, as part of that, um, we, um, we met at our national convention and kind of took things back home and, and worked with our, our communities, our local and state communities. But I also went to Washington, D.C. and met with um, some of our representatives to talk about some educational initiatives. So that's kind of my basic experience as far as politics and government. Are you aware of the time kind of necessary to help the county council? Yes, I have, I've done some research on this. I've talked to some different people who've been involved in city council and and yes, I am. I am aware of that. What do you think is the greatest opportunity in front of the city of Cape? Uh, I think Cape brings lots, lots, and lots. Um, when we have candidates come in to interview at um, Southeast, one of the things that I always tell them is Cape Girardeau, it may seem like a small little town, but we service so many people. I think it's like 100,000 on a daily basis. Um, we have so many great opportunities, but I think that we can continue to grow those. I think we can really do things to um, support small business, support existing small business, and encourage more small business growth. I think that really um, helps develop community um, roads, transportation. I think. Um, uh, when Renita was talking about poverty being an issue, I know that transportation for people that are dealing with poverty, transportation is a huge issue. And if they're trying to get to a job or get to community service or something like that, and they don't have a car and they have to go six miles to get to their community service and they're supposed to walk and it's raining, that, that's challenging for people. People that are trying to get things right and do the things that they're supposed to do. So I think there's things that we can work on. Um, and part of the reason for that is I feel like this is a good opportunity for me to kind of see what um, 
what this is all about and in a, in a great way for me to give back to my community. But my um, in 2020, my son is going to be a senior in high school and I realized that there is a big time commitment with this and I would like to be able to, he's my baby, um, and I would like to be able to, you know, he's an athlete, and I want to be able to go to the things that he participates in. So this is one of those where in the future I would like to run, but in April of 2020. But I feel like I, there's a lot that I can give back to the community. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, we'll move on with the meeting where we go through some of this stuff individually. Uh, are there anybody here tonight to appear before the council for any item not on the agenda? Shelter and St. Francis Foundation to invite everybody to our homewarming for our four uh, friends that are going to be living in a home now at 827 Jefferson Street. Um, so it's open at August 7th, this, this Wednesday, from 5 to 7. You guys want to come out and see the home that has been set up for them to stay in? You guys can come walk through and bring something? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to, but we just wanted to invite everybody out. It's a very near and dear thing to Renita, who's also just up here. Um, so everybody's invited, it's not just everybody, so I'm just here to do that. Thanks. What's that address again, Ramon? The uh, 827 Jefferson. 827. It's August 7th, it's 5 to 7 p.m.? Mm -hmm. okay. What time is it 7? Uh, from 5 to 7. Oh, 5 to 7. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you for moderating. Anybody else? If you're here for council, we're going to be out of the If not, we're going to agenda review. Scott? Uh, thank you. We have a uh, public hearing tonight for uh, the levying of the annual city revenue tax for public health uh, special business district and uh, the, the fiscal year ending. This is, I always call this a math problem because uh, it basically takes the uh, reevaluation, the uh, properties that have been added uh, to, uh, to the city as well as um, the special road district and, uh, and then the limits of uh, Hancock uh, you basically add, add those things together and whatever growth is allowed and it's math problem as to how much the, uh, the um, uh, levy will change. So um, I think uh, Victor has done that math and uh, that's what's before you tonight. Um, so that will be a hearing and then that will also uh, be on new ordinances on the first, uh, first reading. Um, and the consent agenda, we have the second and third readings of the record plats for Southeast Health uh, West Campus and the U-Haul. Uh, then number five is uh, a um, resolution supporting proposal for Star for Starview Development at the uh, uh, drive-in theater site. Um, we talked about this. This was before it came, came to us, and then they uh, went back and did some work on it. Uh, at the, their, um, uh, everything uh, completed and so they are uh, asking for a resolution of support. Uh, number six is a uh, performance guarantee contracts uh, for Shadow and Villas. Uh, number seven is a license and bid agreement with the Market Tower for their sign. Uh, number eight is a uh, final payment to Reinhold Electric for the lighting and rehabilitation at the airport. Number nine is acceptance and final payment uh, pencil at, uh, for the Capitol Hall ball field uh, project. And number 10 is uh, acceptance of the streetlights at Deerfield, uh, phase one. And 11 is to reschedule our city council meeting in October, uh, from October 21st to October 17th. I think we uh, pulled number one, that's the date that works the best for most uh, folks. We had to change this 
because uh, our uh, International City Manager Association, of which uh, uh, Deputy City Manager uh, Molly Maynard is now uh, on the board of. Uh, so there's several of us going to that, uh, three of us, and so we want to reschedule if all possible. So that's the consent agenda. Are there items on the consent agenda that you'd like to have removed for further discussion? If none, uh, new ordinances. Uh, the first new ordinance is for a, uh, a state block grant agreement uh, for uh, promotion of the schedule of the passenger air service. So this is a yearly thing where we get a, a block agreement to do the promotions for that. That's um, number 12. Uh, 13 is a uh, record plat. Um, this is for um, a new uh, two lot. Um, a record plat and number 14 is the uh, Savella's subdivision it takes three lots down to one uh, 15 is from our public hearing this is the first reading of setting those tax rates and then uh, 16 there's no parking along the north side of Jimbury Way go out uh, to the um, sportsplex uh, we have concerns about people pulling out in sight distance as they pull out there and then also some pedestrian interaction. So we wanted to eliminate uh, parking on the north side of Jimbury Way. Then uh, 17, there's a, a kind of a residual speed limit on Southwest in Boulevard, uh, taking it back to what's normally our speed limit of uh, 30 miles an hour and the other one uh, setting 35. So those are the new ordinances. All right, yeah, I'd, uh, let council know there is an analysis of sales tax revenue uh, in your memos. I encourage you to read that. Uh, we continue to uh, um, have flat sales tax. And so that's, of course, a concern that we keep um, talking about. And, uh, and then also, it's just in five or eight, four minutes. That's all I have, Mayor. Okay. I will uh, bring up the subject of uh, scheduling a special council meeting to approve the. Uh, uh, election results, uh, which we have to have within a few days of uh, the election, and uh, I'm hoping to maybe we'll do that Monday or Tuesday next week. We do it at lunch. We can just take a very short period of time. So think about that, and we'll talk about that in another day. Thanks for catching that. I'm this. Okay. Uh, at this point, we will call a regular session. And have a roll call vote. Roll call. Ryan Essex here. Bob Fox here. Robert Gordon here. Stacy Kinder here. Shelly Moore here. Ann Preston here. I'll entertain a motion for the doctor on the agenda. So moved. Second. Motion made by Robbie, second by Shelly. Any discussion? <coughs> None. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, public hearing. Public hearing regarding the levying of the annual city revenue tax, public health tax, special business tax, special, dis special business district number two tax for the fiscal year ending on the 30th day of June 2020. Anybody here this evening to speak on behalf of the public hearing? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Anybody here tonight to appear before the council for an item that is on the agenda? Everybody get up at once. <laughs> if not, we'll move into the consent agenda. Eric?
you have before you the consent agenda. Um, second. Motion by Ryan, second by Robbie. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried.
If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Bill number 19-125, an ordinance amending schedule A of section 26-228 of the city code. By repealing certain speed limits on South Coast and Boulevard and establishing new speed limits on South Coast and Boulevard in the city of Cape Breton, Missouri. First reading. Second. Motion by Robbie, second by Dan. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, again, I mentioned we need to set a special council meeting to approve the vote. Uh, the election. Uh, the results may be ready Friday, but to play it safe, uh, I would suggest we meet Monday or Tuesday if we can just get the view list together. Uh, in Scott's office, we can do it in there. Anybody that wants to come and listen to that five, four or five minute meeting can be there. Uh, what's, a, what's your preference? Monday morning sometime? Yeah, I'm not available to Tuesday. Could we do it maybe right before lunch on Monday? I would not be able to do that. Well, we need, we need four. Yeah, I'm just now being on full time. Monday works. Okay. Monday work for you? Yeah. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four. There's five of those in there. So, uh, let's say Monday, 1145. So moved. <laughs> Motion made by Ryan. Second. Second for Ryan. All those in favor say aye. 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 That's no fee. Does that mean the mayor's by lunch after that? Oh, I think so. That's a good call. Hey, uh, Mayor. What? I'll, I'll move to adjourn the closed session. Uh, Actually, we, well, we need to, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the closed session for legal actions and litigation, confidential communications with legal counsel and property transactions pursuant to revised, revised section 610-0211 and 2. And personnel issues also. Thank you students for coming. Hopefully this was a learning experience.